Well, on to a solubility product problem. We're going to start with a saturated solution of lead carbonate. We had another problem with lead carbonate, and I discussed this toxicity and equilibria in a previous video. You might want to look that one up at my site. Let's go to this problem right now, though. We've got a saturated solution of lead carbonate made by adding excess lead carbonate to water. Okay, let's, let's look at that right now. Here we've got a test tube, and here it's got this white powder. That's the carbonate that's so often used for paint. And uh, it's shaken up with this water, and they let it settle for quite a while so that some of this lead carbonate can dissolve. Now, the molar solubility, that is how many moles of lead carbonate will dissolve on a liter of water, pure water, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. Here we've got this lead carbonate, and we have some of the lead ions floating around in here. They're invisible. I mean, that's one of the sort of interesting things about the solution. If you didn't know about this carbonate here, you'd think this would just be pure water. Uh, but it's also got some carbonate naturally, because if you have lead ions, you also end up having carbonate ions. So let me put those carbonates in. And here we go. I've got them in white to sort of indicate their natural invisibility because they don't absorb any visible light. So you wouldn't know about this unless you check the conductivity of this water. We'd have ions in it, and the number of ions or the concentration of the ions would affect its conductivity. Well, let's exactly see how much we've got. Let me switch over to my little calculation here, and I'll show you exactly how much lead carbonate got in here in terms of amount. We've got the molar solubility, but people sometimes like to think about stuff in terms of grams. And here'd be the calculation. If this was a question on a AP chem exam where they'd say, you know, how many grams of lead carbonate dissolve in 5 mLs? This is a test tube, and my guess is at the very most we have 5 mLs, 5 thousandths of a liter. And at this concentration, 1.8 times 10 to negative 7, molar means moles per liter, we can cancel out the liters and multiply it by the molar mass of lead carbonate. Most of it's due to lead. The lead has 207 grams per mole. Then we've got the carbonate. And we multiply. The moles cancel out very nicely. The liters cancel out. And our only remaining unit is grams. And we'd have 2.4 times 10 to the negative 7 grams of lead carbonate present in there. That's about 2 times 10 to the negative 7 grams of lead ions present. That's minuscule. It's a speck of dust. If you evaporated this solution and tried to weigh it, you'd have to get yourself a, a balance like this. Yeah, you need, you'd have to have a budget of about $31,000. This price, I think, was on Amazon. And they had a $24 delivery charge. This thing is just beautiful. I wish I had a chance to work with one of these things. And I've put here showing you where the 2 times 10 to the negative 7 grams would be on this. Here it is. An uh, amazing machine. And here's a video of its use. I've got a link to this video. It's just a fun watch. I mean, they're all dressed up. They've got their, they're in a hood. They've got their protective devices because even a little bit of fleck of their uh, clothing, a piece of lint would end up affecting this. And notice they've got the amounts here in terms of milligrams, thousands of a gram. So you have, you have a one here, you're dealing with a thousandth of a gram. So here's a weighing. There, fast. There you have a little container. And she's going to scoop just the smallest amount. What coordination. Put it in there and record the weight. And there it is. Wow. Two milligrams. Now, don't forget the amount of lead carbonate in this volume of water would be 2 times 10 to the negative 7. So on our balance, you know, what you saw, the... Uh, person weighing there was two thousandth of a gram and this is like two ten millionths of a gram. So that gives you some idea of the quantities that are involved. But let's deal, uh, when they try and measure these solubilities, they won't use a mass. They'll typically use electrical conductivity because that's a lot easier to measure than those extremely small amounts. 
So let's look at this equilibrium. We've got some a lot of lead carbonate down here. Now it doesn't matter how much lead carbonate you have because only a certain concentration of lead ions and carbonate ions can be held by this water. If that concentration gets any higher, they'll just precipitate and make some more solid. So the solid's irrelevant in this, as we know, in most equilibria. Now the KSP, the solubility product, which is much more reliable than solar motor solubility because it will work with all solutions, not just water. And here we've got it being 3.2 times 10 to the negative 14, the typical low KSP where not much stuff dissolves. So I've got the equation written here as Q. This is our reaction quotient. This is our test. And if our concentration of lead times the concentration of the carbonate equals Q, we've reached a saturated solution. Solving this would involve just the square root of 3.2 times 10 to the negative 14. And here you have it, that 1.8 molar solubility, but that's in pure water. When we have that value, when Q ends up equaling the KSP, we've reached a saturated solution. This is a solution that contains as much of our lead carbonate as possible. So when Q equals KSP, we've reached an equilibrium. And let me highlight that with this illustration here. Again, we've got our two ten millionths of a gram of ions of lead and carbonate. And they're not just suspended in here as just there permanently. They're in an equilibrium. Some of these lead ions and carbonate ions are coming together to make this precipitate. And some of the water in here is reacting with the solid lead carbonate to make lead ions and carbonates. We could have five grams of solid here. We could have 20 grams of solid here. Still, the only thing we could get in terms of concentration would be 1.8 times 10 to the negative seven molar. I mean, if we had more water, we'd have more grams, but the concentration would be the same. So this is really the first sentence, and you should really understand that. A saturated solution where we have water and our lead carbonate, where we have a specific amount of lead and carbonate ions which are dependent upon the solubility product. Here's where something new comes into play. How would the addition of HNO3 affect the mixture? Well, being an AP chemistry student, you know that HNO3 is a strong acid. It's going to produce H plus ions. And you also know that nitrate ions don't affect solubility. All nitrates are soluble. So let's go to this part to see what happens if we add a strong acid, in this case nitric acid, and see what happens to Q, KSP, and what shifts occur in terms of the solid and the concentrations at equilibrium. So I've got a new page here where I show what happens. We've added some acid. We originally have our equilibrium that I had a picture of before, our equilibrium where we had our 1.8 times 10 to the negative, negative 7 molar of both lead and carbonate. Each one of those are at that concentration. And we add some acid. Now, the secret to knowing this, and this is what a chemistry stu student should end up knowing, is that a strong acid produces H plus ions. And H plus ions react with carbonates. That's that's something really everybody should know. Baking soda and acid produces carbon dioxide, which fizzes away, and we have water. In fact, uh, there are entire mountain ranges made of calcium carbonate, and if acid ends up hitting it, it ends up dissolving some of that and producing carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and that's why I've got this picture here. We have some of these carbonate ions bubbling away into CO2, and that affects our equilibrium because their equilibrium was dependent upon the concentration of this carbonate. If the carbonate's removed, our Q equation changes. We had our fizzing. Our fizzing got rid of carbonate by having it bubble away as CO2. It went away as a gas. Now our KSP is a constant at a given temperature. The concentration of the lead ions times the carbonate ions equals 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4, but we've messed things up. It's no longer there. Now when we're calculating our reaction quotient of this product, we still have our 1.8 times 10 to the negative 7, but we've wiped out our carbonate. This part isn't here. And in fact, we're multiplying 0 times this 1.8 times 10 to the negative 7. And of course, that means 
our Q, our reaction quotient, is going to be less than our KSP. I mean, our KSP is 3.2 times that negative 14. But I mean, this is going to be, in fact, this actually would be zero. So what's going to end up happening? Well, when your Q is lower than your equilibrium, equilibrium constant, the Q will have to end up increasing, which means we're going to have to have higher concentrations of lead and carbonate to get this reaction. So we've got a little memnonic where if we have this unequal sign that we follow the alligator. So let's follow the alligator and see what happens in this reaction. What's going to happen is our acid is going to make this react more to produce more lead and to produce more carbonate. But of course, the carbonate is being wiped out by the acid. Just five drops of one molar nitric acid will end up creating a situation where our lead concentration, because this more and more has to dissolve, will have to go up to one-tenth molar. And of course, when that happens, our carbonate is very, very low too. But notice, we now have our Q equal to our KSP, and we have reached a new equilibrium. Now, this new equilibrium involves a greater concentration of lead because our carbonate was wiped out. When the reaction shifted forward, it made more lead and carbonate, but this carbonate was eliminated. So the lead concentration was constantly being increased while our carbonate wasn't. In fact, it was being depleted. So we will have used up some of the solid. You know, the amount of solid, well, we'd have to do a stoichiometry thing with that. <laughs> Let's go up and answer these questions. What happened to Q and K? Q decreases and the KSP stays constant because it is a constant. Our Q, our reaction quotient, is wiped out because of the carbonate. If this was a FRQ question, this is all you have to say. You know, if they said, how would the addition of HNO3 affect the mix mixture, including the changes in Q and KSP? Simple statement. Q decreases, KSP has stayed constant. What about the shifts in the amounts of solid? Well, the amounts of solid is the solid is going to decrease. Its mass is going to be decreased because it has to dissolve to produce more lead to try and get our Q up. Our reaction again moves forward. This forward shift means that solid is used up and lead ions and carbonate ions increase. So our other, other part of the answer would be this. Our carbonate ion concentrations decrease. I have a speculation here in case the lead had been moved up to one tenth, which is not unusual. Like I say, five drops of one molar of nitric would do this. Now, one thing to note, and this is what AP students should realize and think about. Wait a second. He said, here's an imbalance of charges. If we have more lead ions and less carbonate ions, don't we have a net positive charge? Well, that's taken care of by the nitric acid. The NO3 ions are here in its place. For every carbonate that's wiped out, we get two nitrates that come in in its replacement, and we still have a neutral solution. I put the nitrate down in here, but I should have actually put it in this solution as the replacement. So all is well in terms of ion neutrality because you can't have a solution with an imbalance of ions. Very often on a question, they'll ask about what happens to the charges of things. And you'd realize that you have to keep things balanced. And we just replace the carbonates with the nitrates, which are soluble. So there's our solution for this very, very interesting problem.